If you are a student in aerospace, you most likely will take a course where you have to derive the aircraft equations of motion. The problem that most people have is that the textbooks make it overly complicated and they don't make it easy enough to understand. So in this video, I'll show you guys step by step how you can do so. Let's first look at dynamics. Cross product X cross Y gives you Z, which is outside the plane. Next, you have vectors. A can be represented by X, Y, and Z components, as you all should know. So it'll be A times I plus Y, J plus Z, K. I, J, K are the unit vectors. Newton's laws, as you all know, F equals M, A, where mass is the object mass and acceleration is D, V over D, T. V is velocity. Torque, you have I equals torque equals i times alpha where alpha is angular acceleration h equals angular momentum which is i omega so dh over dt gives you torque what the industry uses in aviation is as follows x points forward y points right z points down positive you also have your moments l m n these are roll pitch and yaw moments as you can see there Velocities point along X, Y, and Z. If you're confused, I'll show you guys right now. That's positive yaw. That's positive pitch. That's positive roll. These can be summarized into matrices. Each for yaw, pitch, and roll, as you can see here. We also have the directional cosine matrix. You multiply all of them in backwards order. So you get the... 3, 2, 1 sequence. Let's say you're a plane flying and you want to track its location or, and speed. The ATC will be the earth frame which is fixed, does not move at all and the plane will have its own frame. This frame is known as the body frame which is represented by XB, YB and ZB. R is the position. We don't need that for now because we want to derive everything in the earth frame. That's how we can measure stuff. Angular velocities are given by P, Q, and R. So that's your omega. Let's derive the forces. So let's begin. The forces, we want to measure them in the earth frame. And the forces are actually along the body frame of the airplane. So here we have to use the transport law. Let's begin with F equals mass times dV over dt in the earth frame. Then we have to use the transport theorem. So it'll become mass times velocity derivative in the earth frame equals in the body frame plus omega of the body relative to earth multiplied by vb this is the transport theorem so we have the earth frame the body frame and that's a cross product there next you also have u dot v dot and w dot as that is the acceleration that's your dv over dt in the body frame and VB is simply UVW. These are the velocities, as I mentioned before, along the X, Y, and Z axes. Omega B over E equals angular velocities P, Q, and R. But you see the problem here? We cannot multiply a 3 by 1 by a 3 by 1. So we have to convert the P, Q, R matrix into a skew symmetric matrix. It looks like this. The operation on the left hand side is not possible because you cannot multiply two matrices like that. So you have to convert it into an N by N matrix and then multiply it by UVW. When you get that, all you do is you plug and you solve everything. The force of an airplane is represented as X, Y, and Z. These capital X force, Y force, and Z force, it is not the axis, it is the actual force itself. So it's like, if you, if you have a force of 1000 in the X direction, then this X will be 1000. When you plug in the values, you get this equations here. So it is simply a function of P, Q, and R, the acceleration, the velocity, and the mass of the airplane. For the moments, we have the same idea. We want to measure them in the earth frame because that is your inertial frame. So we can start with the equation I talked about before where torque equals dH over dt, where H represents the angular momentum and we want it in the earth frame. 
So then we have the transport law once again, dh over dt in the earth frame is equal to the body frame plus once again omega b over e the cross hb. I said before that h equals i omega, omega as you all know is one once again pqr, the t exponent there is transpose, i is the inertia matrix. So when you differentiate that, you will get this equation here once again dh over dt in the earth frame is equal to the angular momentum change in the body frame plus omega b over e cross hb. Let's first solve for dh over dt in the body frame. Since h equals i omega, then obviously dh over dt equals i times d omega over dt and that's simply p dot, q dot and r dot. It is just the rate of change of omega in the body frame. The inertia matrix you can see here is given by this matrix there and this is a standard law in dynamics. The thing in our case is that we will assume our airplane is symmetric so it's like two engines on one side, two engines on the, the other side. Most airplanes now are symmetric so we can say that ixy and iyz equals zero. Solving the rightmost side we have omega b over e cross hb. So let's first do omega b over e. That's once again the skew symmetric matrix. So it's zero, negative r, q and so on. H once again is i times omega. And this time the i matrix is already an n by n matrix. So you just multiply that by p, q and r. So let's plug it everything back. On the left hand side we have dh over dt, that's the torque. And torque equals l, m, n. DH over DT in the body frame once again is I times D omega over DT. So you get that matrix there which has I XX times P dot plus XZ times R dot and so on. Then we have omega B over E cross HB. So it is that skew symmetric matrix times I times omega where omega is P, Q and R. So you just simply solve for L, M, N and L, M, N are the moments of the aircraft in the earth frame. This is what you want to get. So you just move everything to the right side. So far we did the forces and the moments, but there's also something we need and we need to solve for the aircraft rotation. We want to solve for the roll pitch and the yaw angles anytime we want to, just because the control system can figure out what to do next. So you guys must be thinking that the roll pitch and the yaw angles derivative is the same as the omega. And that's wrong because let me explain why. Think about it. Let's say you yaw the aircraft a little bit. You, when you yaw, you it's across the z-axis. But the moment you change the yaw angle, the body frame will change, right? Because x and y will point somewhere else. So when you do this, the axis direction will change. Vectors have a scalar and a direction, right? So the moment you change direction, you will have a change in p, q and r. So the vectors change with each rotation as well. So that is why you cannot simply differentiate P, Q and R, which is the omega, and set it equal to phi pitch and the yaw angle. If this was a problem in one dimension, you could do that, but here we have multiple axes, so that that is incorrect. So let's recap the matrices of the DCM. We have the yaw matrix, the pitch matrix, and the roll matrix. And when you get the DCM, you multiply them in reverse order. So Let's first look at the rotation sequence. We have yaw, then pitch, then roll. So that means after yaw, we have two more rotations, the pitch and the roll. After pitch, we have one more rotation. And after the roll rotation, we're done. So we have to somehow relate this into an equation. So let's look at the equation below. We have omega equals pqr, as you all know, equals the yaw change first, because first we do yaw, then we do roll, that's d of the roll angle over dt multiplied by the yaw matrix r of psi plus once again we have r of psi times r of phi sorry r, r of the pitch angle because we have the pitch matrix multiplied by 0 0 d phi over dt so this next picture will show you guys much better we have the angular velocities the yaw matrix and we have the order of rotations there so this is what the rotation matrix looks like but we need to solve for it, right? We need to solve for p, q, and r as a function of psi dot, theta dot, and phi dot. So when you plug in values and you solve it, you get this va value here. You have p is equal to one, zero, negative sine of the angle, 
And if you want to expand this, you simply multiply two matrices. But like I won't show that here because in simulation and industry, they just use this matrix here. So that is it for the rotation. Here you see the overall equations of motion. Um, I did receive comments about making my videos longer. But the thing is that if I make it too long, then nobody will be interested. Because, you know, obviously if people are on YouTube, no, nobody wants to sit like an hour long video. Um, the whole idea of YouTube is to express concepts in the most concise manner, but as quickly as possible also. And with that being said, I hope you guys learned something new. And I hope I did a good job of breaking down the complex equations into something understandable and comprehensible. Now you have an idea of the yaw and role, the forces, the moments, what they all mean, and how they all can be represented mathematically. I'll be making more videos in the future about control design and stuff like that. So as I make those videos, you will also get more practice and you will get a better understanding of building a flight simulation and whatever it entails. So with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.